and welcome to Long's Toys. I have a Power Rangers review for you today. This is the Super Mega Force Armored Mighty Morphin White Ranger. I'm going to go ahead and move the figure off to the side for a second so we can take a look at the packaging. It says Super Mega Force at the top and has a picture of the Super Mega Force Red Ranger. Nice picture of the Mighty Morphin White Ranger down here. On the side, nice picture of the action figure. Another picture over here. On the back it shows you all the accessories that it comes with. And then it shows you some of the other figures in the line. There's Mighty Morphin Red with the Green Ranger Shield, Green Ranger, White Ranger, uh, Armored Mega Force Ranger, and then Super Mega Force Red. And then down here is a picture of all the Ranger keys. What I find it funny is that on the packaging there's still pictures of Green Zeo, even though we ended up getting Yellow Zeo. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and take a look at the figure. Okay, so here we have the White Ranger himself. It's very, very, very nice detailing on this figure. I'll start with Saba. Get a real close up look at Saba. The paint apps are very nice. I like how the blade is silver and then the rest of the sword is white and it has some of the gold accents. I know it's kind of giving me a little bit of sheen here from my light, but I'll try to focus on this a little bit better. The uh, the molding of the uh, Tiger Zord coin on the sword is very nice there in the middle and the gold right here. And then there's gold here obviously and then there's silver on the blade. The only thing that I don't get is they did such a nice job detailing this half of the sword. And then when it came to Saba's head, they just gave up. Not really sure why. I mean, they could have at least maybe just painted like this, and then this on the top, and this on the side gold. I understand they probably can't get in to paint the eyes, but I don't know. They could have done a little something on the hilt here, more towards the bottom of the handle. But the rest of the sword is very nice. Now if I bring this guy back in. Uh, he does have a hole on the side you can peg Saba into. There's a peg on the side of the sword. Go ahead and peg him right on there. Now, when he comes in the packaging, uh, both of the foot guards and the forearm guards here, I'm just using the word guard for a lack of a better term, um, you have to, these are one solid piece. These come in two pieces and they clip on very nicely. There's a little space here on the back of the boot so that it can only go in one spot and you just put it on and you clip them on and they fit snug and very nice. With these, you have to take the fists off and to do that, all you do, it's a little tight. Hold on. There you go. The fists just pop off and he does come with two other fists where the hands are a little bit more open. I'll get to them in a sec. And then you have to push these on. First you have to push this. It's the little band. You have to feed that up and push that all the way up and get that on there. And then you have to push these on. And then you have to pop the hand back on. Up, oh, see? And at the lightest touch, this is what it looks like underneath. Like a regular kind of, almost like a Green Ranger hand. Now, what I don't get is if you look on these, you can see how there's a notch like it's supposed to find a place, but there's no notch on the hand. If there was like a little notch and you could slide it on and it would like, not click, but like fat, like kind of, you know, get into place and find a logical stop, but it doesn't really do that. You just kind of have to push it on as best you can. And then, you know, these ball joints are kind of a pain because this thing keeps wanting to move. So you finally get that back on, then you just kind of have to force this back on until it stays in place hopefully you just kind of find you know how the best way that it can get on there and then just kind of hope it stays on i mean once you get it on it looks really nice but it's just kind of a pain to get it on this is in two pieces split down the middle this is like the only piece that's actually somewhat easy to remove and you, he has the triangle like the reverse mighty morphin because he's white so you just pop that back on 
and that just that clips on and stays on pretty nicely. Again, nice Tiger Zord detail there on the on the front. Looks really good. I really like the detailing on his helmet. I'm gonna try to get in pretty close here. Really nice detailing. I'm gonna pan up a little bit just to fit it. Really, really nice painting on the helmet. Really pleased with that. Nothing on the back, obviously. All right. Articulation wise, his head swivels from side to side. It is not a ball joint, so he, oh, it is a ball joint, but very limited. I almost, I didn't realize it was a ball joint at first because it can only move this much up and down. Sorry, let me back up. It can only move this much up and down, so it's not a whole lot. It mostly moves side to side. The arms at the shoulder are on a ball joint. They can go up and down and spin all around. There is, uh, right here, right where the gold band is, this can turn. There's a swivel there. You have 90 degrees at the elbow. The forearm can swivel right at the where this is. I apologize for that. The phone video cut out very quickly there. So, as I was saying, the hand is on a bit of a ball joint here where you attach the hand, as I showed you previously. But then, there's also a tiny, there's a swivel right behind that, so that the hand can kind of move in from side to side. And I think that rotates as well. It's kind of hard to, the hand just kind of goes up like this. It's nice for, or, no, that ball joint I think does move too, but it's kind of hard because you kind of have to, take the hand off to kind of get that to move uh does it have waist? no i don't think it has waist articulation but the the hips are on a ball joint as well i'm going to remove saba just to show you it can rotate out like that and up there's a swivel right below that so that the leg can move you can kind of see this like leg muscle is kind of there to hide it which is a nice little touch then you have 90 degrees at the knee. Well, not quite 90 degrees, but very close. And then again, where this like guard is, shin guard, there's a swivel. And then there's a limited movement here on the ankle. So all told, he has several points of articulation, and he's a very, very nice figure. The detailing is nice, and I really like the articulation. Now he does come, this is his kind of normal set of hands that he starts out with. And Saba can fit very easily into the hand. You can, like I said, it's a bit of a pain to pop off these hands. But you can, now see this does, I think this does turn. Yes, this does turn too. And I'll show you. See how there's a there's a swivel there. And I know the light's bleeding this out, and I apologize. So you can turn that however you want that. So you can go side to side or up and down. Now the other set of hands that he comes with are like an open set of hands. Oh, it's kind of hard to get them on there. And then every time I switch out the hands this like bracer or gauntlet or whatever you want to call it the cuff of his forearm always falls down there we go so if you want to have like one hand holding Saba and the other one kind of open the other cool thing about this is if you take Saba off because Saba does have that peg where it fits on the belt you can put it in the hand on this side and then he can hold it like this, like if he's talking to Saba at the top of his sword. So that's kind of a nice touch. The other hand does not have a peg. It's just an open hand. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch, though, because you, there's really not a good way if you try to... Let me take this off. If you try to put Saba in like his normal hand... I mean, he can kind of hold it that way, but it doesn't look nearly as good. So I thought that was a nice touch to have that where you can put it in his hand so that the hilt is high enough up 
that it looks like he's talking to Saba. Sorry, I did want to show you real quick. It's easier to see if you take off the shield. He does have articulation here in the waist. It's just, it's not at the waist. It's a little higher up in the abdomen. I mean, I guess he, he can turn side to side at the waist, but his belt kind of makes it a little tough because you can kind of see how it, it like wants to move the belt as you do it. But he can turn side to side there. And then he has this kind of joint in his abdomen where he can kind of rock back a little bit. It's not fantastic and honestly when you put the shield on it kind of hides it so i forget it's even there but he can still kind of fold back and rotate side to side so i just wanted to highlight those to let you know that they do exist i have to say that overall i really like this i found it at toys r us uh, they range anywhere from about 17 to 20 dollars depending on what areas I've noticed that some Toys R Us's, depending on what area they're in, are a little bit cheaper than others. Like if you're in a little bit ritzier area, um, like I, I found this one at the Times Square Toys R Us, so it was definitely twenty because it's a higher price in New York City. But I definitely think it's worth it. It's a very reasonable price. You get a very articulated figure. It looks great. The attention to detail with the paint and the articulation points, I think it's really well done. I'm not the hugest White Ranger fan. I definitely fall more in the Green Ranger camp as far as Tommy goes. But I really like this thing. I've been looking for the Green Ranger one for a while. Have not been able to find it. I really can't wait to find it and just have both of them on a shelf next to each other because they're really nice figures. So if you're a White Ranger fan or just a Power Ranger fan in general, I definitely recommend this figure. I think it's really well done and definitely worth the money. And it's definitely cheaper than a Figuarts, which I know it probably doesn't have as many points of articulation as a Figuarts, but I think it's pretty close. It's very nicely done. But please tell me what you think in the comments. Please like and share this video. Please make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Also, I have Facebook and Twitter. The links will be down in the description, so please check those out and follow me on both of them. I mentioned in my last video, I'm coming up on my 100th video, so I'm playing a giveaway details to follow but please make sure you're following me and subscribed on everything so that you'll hear the details as they come out i hope you've enjoyed this video of the armored mighty morphin white ranger and thanks for watching